Okay. Uh, good if good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Uh, for those that you don't know me, my name is Thomas Diaz, and I've been involved in the FabLab network since 2006 um, in many different projects, um, from establishing labs to also helping to initiate programs like the Fab Academy and organizing Fab events, and now running the Fab City program. Um, I've been in a journey of maybe around 13, 14 years in Barcelona, which and now change uh, and now I am in, in Bali in Indonesia uh, thanks to a set of coincidences of this kind of a, the, the life-changing pattern of the pandemic and um, from here I'm trying to create a local agenda connected to the work that some of you know and, and also creating new opportunities for the Fab Lab Network and for Fab Cities. Um, I I want to thank also for for the people that uh, were asking questions that you kind of uh, um, accelerated something that we wanted to do anyways to organize a, a FAQ in relationship to the Fab Lab conference and Fab City Summit that is taking place uh, in Bali, Indonesia this year for again a, a lot of coincidences that came together. So let me start uh, to explain a little bit the context, uh, and then maybe uh, we can go and, and share some detailed information about the event, and then we can go through the questions uh, that you might have. Uh, the first part of the context is like, uh, as I said, um, I am in Bali by a set of coincidences, uh, and, and that was one of the consequences of the of the pandemic for many of us change our lives and, and help accelerate some processes and, and in my case I think that it was the end of a of a period in Barcelona and then start a new one uh, back to the tropics and, and back to the periphery out of the, the centrality of Europe and the west um, then um, the 2022 events related with the FAB community, there were especially two. Uh, one was uh, planned to be in Bhutan. FAB 17 was planned to be in Bhutan until January or February this year, as, as, as maybe some of you know, and you can go and, and recall in your newsletters uh, to see that around the time there was still planned to be in Bhutan, at least at the end of 2021, early 2022. And then the Fab City Summit, uh, which we also uh, sometimes organize as an independent event, depending on the on the context, was supposed to happen in, in Seoul, in, in Korea, and in where, where there is a very active uh, Fab City community. Um, the Fab City Summit in Korea got uh, the team in Korea asked us to organize it another year because the main support we had always in Seoul was coming from the mayor, uh, the former mayor, Mr. Park, uh, who passed away last year. And since the mayor passed away and under, I mean, you can research and look for Google. Um, I don't want to say the, 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 the conditions, but it was kind of a super uh, unexpected and, and really, really sad for, for, for a lot of us. Um, so they asked us to change uh, the dates of the Seoul Fab City Summit, and then by the end of last year, we decided that, what, uh, you know, using a little bit the context, the favorable context of being in Bali and Indonesia, to do the Fab City Summit here in Bali. Then by the end of 2021, we were planning the Fab City Summit uh, to be in Bali only, and then um, to happen after the Fab Conference in Bhutan. Uh, then uh, we learned that the, the team in Bhutan uh, was, uh, they were going through a lot of, they were having busy times and, you know, Fran maybe have more, more uh, details about me and can talk about, or Norella, that you have been more, in, uh, you know, connected with the, with the Bhutanese ecosystem and also with the planning of the FAB 17. In some point they say, look, the country is having some challenges in relationship to the immigration uh, uh, situation. Uh, we have a lot of work setting up the new labs. We might not be ready in July, right? And then we always had like at the, 
you know, saved in the very bottom of our box, like, uh, okay, in the case that Bhutan is not organizing the Fab City Summit, which is some, uh, the, Fab, the Fab Lab Conference, sorry, we can maybe dream to have like, a, you know, one all together conference uh, in, in Bali since we're going to organize already the Fab City Summit. So that happened. And uh, I asked the people here, the partners here, if they will be, you know, they will be willing to host also um, the, the Fab Conference in, in, in addition to the Fab City Summit. And, and they say yes. Uh, Bali is, is, a, is a place in Indonesia has been a place that has been suffering a lot from the pandemic, but also it's an interesting place where people and, and, and you know, the, the, the local leadership and, and both in Bali, but also nationally are looking on like a, proposing new models uh, after the pandemic and in response uh, to the decrease of visitors for tourism, which is part of like a, a former, a previous economy, right? So that's how we got here uh, uh, a little bit. So I, this was not planned. This was basically Bali is saving somehow the fab year. Um, and, and in a way, I'm very thankful, first of all, from the trust of, 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 of the team behind organizing the fab conferences to say, hey, you know, we put this on, on your hands, which is also a big commitment. Um, also to the local uh, ecosystem, uh, uh, which is also quite crazy to say, hey, yes, we can be ready in, in nine months or something like that, right? So that's why Bali. And then I can, I can, I don't know if, if, if some of you have gone through the, through the event, but I can, I can maybe quickly share with you uh, a little bit about what is it and, and what we're doing. Um, uh, but we're doing a, a fest. So um, the combination of a, of a FAB conference and the FAB City Summit is something, as I said, that we did before in Paris was a bit separated, but not completely together. The, in, in Montreal, we separated like at the days and we, like I saying, like at the FAB conference finishes, the FAB City Summit starts. Now we're, we're, our approach is a little, even super blended. So you don't know where, when, if you're part of a Fab City Summit of a Fab Lab conference, it will be, you're gonna be part of activities that involve uh, the two. And to, con consent or to condense or to, or to group these events together, we decided to call it the Bali Fab Fest. And this, no, this name comes together also from a discussion locally. Uh, it was easier for, the, the local government and the local partners to say that we're organizing a, a festival and not like at the 17th International Public Conference of the Fab City Summit, you will have to organ, you know, to explain things in a very long way. And um, so this is why Fab Fest, so this comes all together. And then the topic is designing emerging realities, um, which is a bit of a, a wink to the Niels book. As you, as you know, it's called Designing Reality. And, and just maybe twisting it a little bit and saying like, well, there is no one reality, you know, there with the, how the world is changing this reality. There are multiple realities, first of all, and they are emerging. So it's really difficult to say, here's the tool to design a reality. So it's more about, okay, let's create possibilities to design multiple or possible realities, no? Um, this is very in the, in the language of, of selling point. This is some of the, this is a presentation that we use to engage with the partners. Um, we can share it with you, uh, but one of the things that we want to do is to, uh, to help understand that this is not just an event about technology and fabrication, but it's also to think the potential that these technologies, this community, and, 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 and the skills that we have been nurturing for you know, over two decades have to boost a new economies, right? And, and especially in Bali, we can exemplify that very well because um, it's a place where everything like it comes together very nicely. You have like a culture, tradition, crafts, but also you have, you know, crypto, you know, people going around and try people, other people trying to bring super top technologies. This is this place of contradictions. The size is quite interesting because it allows to happen a lot of things and has a lot of challenges, right? Related to waste related to the extractive model uh, of the economy that, that we know, the globalized economy. 
Um, and at the same time, also presents a lot of uh, potential for change and relatively fast. No? Um, I think that I'm gonna, again, like I'm gonna, gonna jump this in order not, for, not, not to read things that I'm gonna share with you, but also this, this event um, will have a, a, a huge Balinese impact, but it's involving also at, nat at a national level, at the Indonesian level, a lot of engagement uh, with the national government and the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, and we're also uh, engaging the Ministry of Development, as, as well as many of the labs and maker spaces that are part of the whole Indonesian ecosystem. And also in the Asian countries um, where we want to connect, you know, we are connected already through some projects with Malaysia, uh, with Vietnam, uh, and, and also we have been asking the, the FAB Asia Network also to happen here. So I think it's like an event that goes beyond Bali and has a, a regional context. And it's a very interesting opportunity to boost um, this ecosystem, uh, especially in Indonesia, because if, when you compare it with Vietnam and with the Philippines, Indonesia has like a four fab labs, three or four fab labs, and Philippines have over 20, Vietnam has around 12. So there is like a, also a need of boosting the, the growth of a fab lab network here in Indonesia and, and of course in Bali. Um, yeah, again, this is a more like a selling point. We don't need to sell this to you. I think like also a lot of you know about the history of how we came here, you know, the previous events. Since 2005, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the first Fab Lab, I think, you know, it's a moving target when it started, but it's around 2002. The legend says, depending on the book you read. So we are like getting to the 20 years of the of the Fab Lab network. The venue is gonna be is at the Jimbaran Hub. Uh, is a uh, is a new place that is uh, is being created. It's a it's a private initiative uh, that comes from family. Uh, inheritance land uh, from one of our, of our partners. And uh, in the Jimbaran, uh, this person and then the Jimbaran hub, they're trying to build like a creative community around uh, green technologies uh, and kind of a do, it's interesting what they say that they, there is a, a town in, in Bali that is called Ubud. And um, maybe some of you know that if you have been here, but the ones that you don't know it, Ubud is actually is where the Eat, Pray, Love movie was shot. Uh, it's like all this spiritual artistic town. And in the early 19th, in the early 20th century, some of the top artists were coming to Ubud in Bali and to have to spend time and to paint and, and, and to teach to the local, all the local, local artists as well. And the, so there was a whole artist movement created. Uh, which still prevails today. And these people in Jimbaran, they say like, hey, we want to do similarly to what Ubud did in the, like a century ago, but in this case, support creatives and makers uh, to be in this side, in this part of Bali, to, to look at uh, creating uh, green solutions for, for, our, for, our, uh, for our issues locally. No? So it's a Jimbaran hub. You can look more in, 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 in the internet and see they have a co-working space, they have, it's a place that has like uh, a skate park, a BMX track, a karting uh, track. They have a greenhouse. They're building a fab lab. Um, they have gallery space. They're building a, a lot of things actually in the last two years. And, and they also host some of the hotels in which that actually are recommended to stay. Um, so the program is a 10 day program, and this is intentionally 10 days because we know that the travel to Bali is not like a weekend and, you know, in, of a, a, in a two hour flight. So it requires quite a long trip. And also we, we believe that after two years of not being together as a network, we deserve to spend some quality time. Um, and we invite you to plan to come for at least two weeks, right? So the couple of days you need to fight the jet lag and the couple of days you need to recover from the hangover and fly back to your country, right? Uh, so plan for at least two weeks is my recommendation. Uh, the, the, the flight is, is not so cheap, I know, because all of the flights are being increasing everywhere. We choose not to be in a high season to make it more accessible for flights and accommodation. But keep in mind, if you stay longer here, it's even maybe cheaper than staying in your hometown. <laughs> 
because you can have like a relatively, uh, you know, um, good prices in relation to food and accommodation if you're staying for longer time. You can have visas for one month, which would be the idea. We would love to have you around for the entire month of October. And you can even go crazy and start for, stay for two months even and plan to, you know, to set up shop temporarily here in Bali, at least with the visas in a, the visa on arrival program, which is the visas that are the low cost and you don't need to have a previous application. So the flow of the event uh, is in the 10 days is, is kind of a build, build up the, you know, the peak momentum of the event, which we believe is gonna happen uh, and, you know, from the first Saturday until, until, the, you know, until the Wednesday. Uh, but every, every day at every time is gonna happen something important. No? From the first days is the check-in, the registration and also trips to across Bali to, to get connected to some of the local challenges that we are partnering with, also connected with local organizations that are gonna have some of these challenges. And so that's happening the second, the, the first two days, the, the Thursday and the Friday. So the second and the third day, sorry. Uh, on Saturday, we roll out like a, the more traditional format of a FAB conference. Uh, on Sunday, it's more like a open, more fab food kind of a flow. On Monday is the more political day. That's when the FAB cities pledge to become part of a FAB city network. Tuesday, Wednesday is more the traditional format, or again, of the FAB conference. Uh, Thursday is more like an open for everyone in Bali for, to, for, to come for free to the event and kind of a more like an open maker fairish type of vibe. Uh, Friday is the symposium, which you know already, and Saturday is a mega party in a recently inaugurated beach club called Loca. Um, for the challenge, uh, we're going to work on, on 10 innovation initiatives that we're going to partner with local, local organizations. Um, and we want to create teams working specifically on the challenge. So there will be people that will be in the afternoons, which usually you have panels, theoretical or practical workshops. The people doing the, the challenge will be working on the challenge uh, that day specifically, those days specifically. This is again selling points, selling points. Uh, this is like a join us. You know, it's more like selling, selling, selling because we're looking for desperately for sponsors in a very short period of time. So, and you want to know more? Remember that the website is bali.fab.event.org, and there is a landing page right now. The tickets uh, are are open to register. Uh, there is information already um, put up for uh, proposing workshops, panels, uh, and then we're going to be updating, you know, this. We have, we have speakers that we want to, in, we are inviting to become part, and this is like a list curated between the organizing committee, which is a mix between the, the team of our foundation, Neil, and the local team here in Bali in Indonesia. And I'm doing a little bit of articulator between the two, no? Um, and uh, then the rest of the, the workshops and the talks that you proposed, and we're gonna organize a schedule to place it in the different days and make sure that all makes sense. Um, as well as the, you know, and also of course, keep in mind that there are the research papers. So there are pretty, pretty much a lot of ways to participate. And, and yeah, I hope that this helps to introduce you to what uh, is the context and how we got to Bali, what the, the event is, what is called Bali Fab Fest, and uh, how is the flow of the of the entire week, how you can engage uh, with us, and 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 I'm happy to to go over some of the questions that you have. I don't know if people are writing or in the chat already. I oh, know these are the great. This is Nore sharing some of the links that I have been mentioned. So. Over to you, Network. So please shoot. I think I'll start. Uh, uh, Thomas, thank you for the explanation. Uh, uh, regarding Bhutan, yeah, I have been, uh, uh, I spent uh, uh, a few time in there in Bhutan. And since very recently, they had this zero COVID policy which was fully incompatible with uh, doing any kind of international event. So now they, they, they slightly changed, but 
it, it was too late to organize anything. In any case, uh, still there is uh, restrictions there, so I don't think it could happen. So this was a very quick and nice move. And in relation to that, uh, what do you think are going to be the expected COVID uh, restrictions to reach and there? Yeah, Indonesia has um, has been, you know, it has been a moving strategy. Like um, this is a tropical country, so things are are changed relatively fast. You know, it's it's interesting how I think like uh, the the context and the weather affect the character. So as as you can be in the morning and have like a typhoon rain in the afternoon. <laughs> It, it things can change very rapidly although i have to say that uh, we are in a very stable uh, uh, i would say democracy uh, with a government that is is quite flexible in a way no? we went from full lockdowns and to kind of uh, nothing the next day or when you read in the, in the newspapers it's full lockdown and then you see in the streets the life was completely different from what you read in the newspapers no so a little there's a little bit of that as and everywhere else um the policy is oriented the although the, the policy of, of indonesia was very restrictive and now it's oriented more towards recovering the economy right and attracting visitors and, and facilitating visitors to come and so in relation to the COVID restrictions, they have reduced a lot of the requirements, although they're still requiring vaccination to enter. And once you are in, 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 the, in Indonesia, you don't have to use masks out, outdoor. Some places require indoor, especially in, the, in government buildings. So for instance, if you're gonna stay for two months, you will have to arrive to the airport and declare that you're going to start for two months. So when you do the visa, so you do a visa on arrival for two months. And then after one month, you will have to go to the immigration office to renew, to take, they take a photo of you and then you renew for another month. Uh, so when you go there, you will have to wear a mask, no, these kind of things. Or if you go to a bank, maybe so more like a public buildings. Um, and then, um, the, the the thing that might be a bit more complicated, but also like a, that was complicated in one point was the visas uh, that became very restrictive. And so in some point, Indonesia canceled completely the visa, the visa for tourists. So now they have visa on arrival. So it means that like it's, it's open for tourists. Make sure there is a list of countries for the visa on arrival program. I'm actually, my parents are gonna come soon and, and one of them has a Venezuelan passport and Venezuela is outside of the visa on arrival program, for instance. So in order to sort it out, uh, we had to apply to a, a longer term stay visa, which is, uh, is two months that can be renovated for two, two times for two months. So it's completely six months you can, but that's more expensive, right? That would be like, I don't know, like a $400 more or less for one visa. Um, so yeah, I think like uh, that, that policy, the, the visa arrival policy shows that Indonesia is open, that it wants to open to the, to the world. And uh, there is a list also of the, of the type of vaccines that are accepted. And um, what I have to say that, yeah, is, you know, as long as you are vaccinated and, 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 and you prove that you are coming for two months and you have your reservations in, in your papers, there is no problem to enter into the country. We we are um, we are talking also to have like a, a, for the days of uh, the first, the week of arrival, a couple of days to have like an special lane in the in the airport of Bali for uh, the attendees for the Bali Hub Fest. So that's something that we're working on also to facilitate like a speed lane. If Adrian, for Spain, you don't need, I mean, you, you can do visa on arrival. If you want to do the visa, exactly. If you want, you, you're going you're gonna to stop, stay less than two months. You don't need visa before to, to, you don't need to request a visa. You can just arrive to the airport. If you're going to start, start for less than 30 days, you just, you know, say to immigration that you are staying for less than 30 days and that's it. If you plan to stay for 60 days, then you have to explicitly go to the lane that is for the visa 
on arrival for 60 days. And if you have your visa before, because you're trying to stay six months, then you just go through the migration window and, and you say, hello, this is my visa. Thomas, what are the risks yes. uh, if there is a new outbreak? Um, you were you were caught in Bali, uh, did I understood that well? And uh, for, for more than a year now? Or? Yeah, I, I, I actually arrived in Bali and uh, I think it was the 9th of March, 2020. And I think the next day, the airport in, uh, in um, in Spain and in the airports in Spain were closing. So and then my girlfriend came that next day. So she literally like uh, left when the doors were closing. Um, so ever since then we have been here. Uh, we have sorted out like a, again like a, the the Indonesian government was flexible in the vis visa issues because we arrived with a visa for less than thirty days. And they allow us to apply for a permanent visa and, and, and now like a more, I have like even like a, a resident visa. And in relationship to the COVID, uh, depends on where you are, no? Like there are, there are areas of, of Bali that are more dense than others. I, I've been most of the time in the South. I, I live literally like a, almost like a rural life. I live next to cows and, and like and the density is low, right? Like the exposure to people is very low. Uh, we we went through COVID, my girlfriend and I, and we, you know, uh, it was kind of okay. You, you can have a healthy life here and, and that's okay. There is, there are like a good private um, medical infrastructure, I have to say as well. Like uh, we were really surprised. My girlfriend suffered from dengue fever and she got, got hospitalized for a couple of days. And, um, like a top-notch hospital, to be honest, uh, and quite accessible, uh, and all was covered by her insurance that she had from Spain. Uh, so that happened actually in our first year. And then we managed even to get the vaccination. So we got our vaccines uh, here uh, in Bali. No? Um, so I have to say like a COVID, again, like a, this is a, my very special case. I, I of course, there are always cases that in which you see in Instagram stories that were a little bit more hardcore of people being in, you know, hospitalized and not having the money to pay, for instance. In some point, there were horrible stories about how was the outbreak in Indonesia, especially in Jakarta and the dense cities. And, um, and I think like, and, and everywhere, as everywhere else, when there was the top of the, of the outbreak, there were horrible stories, I think, yeah, everywhere from, you know, from supposed corruption and to you know bodies being put uh, somewhere, but uh, I have to say that uh, I think like a most a lot of those that was was urban myths and in, in general Indonesia again like at the Indonesia I lived um, kind of uh, handled quite decently the the whole COVID situation. So if there is another COVID outbreak, I think like uh, first of all they are more ready. Uh, I think that um, what the worst can happen is that you can stay stranded in your in your place. And uh, we were lucky because we had a place with a garden, with a pool. Because by the time they were not tourists, so you can find like a affordable places to rent, uh, like a very cheap, to be honest. And so you could get stranded. And then one of the good things also about Bali and Indonesia in general is like it's, the supply chain is quite good. No, at least in the food supply. So um, I would say that is not a terrible place to to get stranded <laughs> because of COVID outbreak. And and do you have a plan B? Uh, suppose in the case that there is a new outbreak one week before 500 people are coming to Bali for a, for a, a FAP fest. That sounds as a big beach party. Um, <laughs> uh, do, 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 do you have a, uh, I can imagine that they then think let's, let's, uh, let's cut to that. What then? Well, well, um, I have to say that we are all in and uh, that's the first thing Like uh, we are, 
planning for this event to happen and put in all our, our, our energy. Uh, mm -hmm. What's what I, I, but it's true that, you know, you have to imagine those scenarios, no? And, and one of the things that is true is that uh, both Fab Foundation and Fab City Foundation and, and the local partners, a meaningful design group, and we can go after to cover that. What, what is that, as you asked? But uh, they have a pocket investment, right? They say, mm. we are investing to make the, the event happen. So the bare minimum, the bare minimum uh, is covered. And so I imagine that we will then have to return the money to people, uh, cover some like at the expenses of the transaction expenses, discounted, I mean, the minimum discount from that if we're mm. charged by the bank or whatever. And and then I'd see you next year somewhere else, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we are we are. I think like we are quite confident that it's going to happen. Mm. The event is going to happen. Okay, thank you. You mentioned the local partner, meaningful design group. Yes, there is not. I can I can find really nothing on the internet about them. Okay. Yeah, it has nothing to do with mindfulness or whatever. No, 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 no. Okay, it's not, okay. It's, it's not. It's not a sect. It's not a sect that is trying then to do hypnosis once you are here and turn you into a a, a yogi, uh, vegan, uh, flat earther. Don't worry. Uh, it's a um, the meaningful design group is an initiative in what actually I participate too, uh, but I'm not. I'm, I'm a minority partner of of out of four. We are four mm -hmm. partners. So uh, together with me, uh, one partner is uh, one Saleha Razzi. I can share with mm -hmm. you. Uh, she's in the, actually they are in the, uh, in the website, no, wait, one Saleha. No, they have an Insta Instagram account, but it is completely empty. Yeah, that actually I created it. So <laughs> wait a second, I'm gonna, let me see if she's, So um, Saleha is uh, the director of the CAST Foundation, uh, which is a culture, arts, science, technology, uh, culture, arts, science, and technology foundation, which is trying to promote these aspects, uh, of these things in Indonesia. So here's the link. This is CAST Foundation. So that's one of the partners. The other one is Ilham Habibi which is the director of the Habibi Center for Democracy. Uh, and Ilham happens to be the son of a former president of Indonesia, uh, who is the father of the modern Indonesia democracy, Beji Habibi. So if you know a little bit about Indonesian history, his father was the one that took over the government when Suharto, the former dictator, died. And then instead of continuing a dictatorship, he called for a, a fair and open elections, the first ones in Indonesia in 1998. And he also served as a minister of technology and innovation in the past. So uh, Ilham, who is another partner of Meaningful Design Group, is also a quite respected and recognized person in Indonesia for his work on democracy, technology, and innovation. Uh, and it, it brings his legacy to the to meaningful design group. And then finally, the other partner is uh, well, this was shared already by Norella, is Agum Prianta, which is the owner of Jimbar and Hub, uh, which is not charging us, for instance, to for the venue among all these things. No, so Jimbar and Hub um, is part of a larger project uh, of I think it's like a hundred hectares of land that he's developing and he's trying to do it like a sustainably and and we act he's going to host the future fab lab there fab lab jimbaran uh and as well as turning to almost like a fab city prototype so i i managed to meet them in a very unconventional i mean in a very again another set of coincidences i met saleha and ilham in the future everything festival in manchester then they came to Barcelona uh, when I was living there that, earlier 2019, and we were just talking about how nice it would be to do things related with Fab Lab and, and technology in Indonesia. Uh, then I visited uh, Indonesia on August 2019, and I met Agung, 
the owner of Jim Baran Hub. And uh, then I came back in March. And then we decided that we should start something, right? So Meaningful Design Group is the name of a, of a company that has almost no activity until now. And, and we, can, we have barely developed all its, uh, we just designed the logo that you can see in the presentation. Uh, but we haven't had the resources and the means yet to, to create uh, you know, the, the visible part of it. I can share with you, what I can do is share with you a document that is kind of a, our the description of what we do. I think that's going to help to put more context. Okay, thank you. I hope that that helps to clarify. It. And yeah, I want to insist it's not it's not a sect. It's a it's a truly legal established initiative, and behind it is people I think like uh, with certain respect both locally. And I hope that you think that also globally. <laughs> Let me find the document. Yeah, any other questions? I, I was wondering uh, about the 10 challenges that you talked about. If they are already defined, and if it's able to work or cooperate before, or online during the event. Just understand also the connection with Maker Fair as we bring okay. this book. Okay. Well, for the Fab Island Challenge, what we're, what we're prioritizing now is to uh, pin down uh, solid collaborations with local initiatives that are working in some of the topics that we're mentioning in the challenge, such as plastic waste, uh, arts and crafts. Uh, um, ocean conservation, uh, water monitoring. Uh, it's a, a bunch of challenges. And of course, there is certain flexibility. Again, like a, this is something for people to, we, we set up some challenges or, or, or some topics. Um, but of course, I think like there's enough flexibility to, to say, okay, well, there's something that is out. So let's, let's try to put it in and make sense. We, we, we have that flexibility. So one is the topics and the other is like at the partners that locally are working in some of those topics. No? So, so far we have engaged with uh, Bamboo U, which is um, um, a, it's an initiative emerged, that emerged from the green school, the people that set up the green school, that built the green school Valley. Maybe you're familiar with that project. So they develop like a whole knowledge about building with bamboo and the bamboo as a material. So they have a, they're building a university, the Bamboo U. Uh, we have we're working with an agro park called Malini, which is doing kids education to preserve the farming practices in Indonesia, because in Bali, especially because people is just going to work as a housekeepers and they forget about how to grow and, and do the things that you know are part of the productive economy. And we're working with another initiative that is based in Indonesia, but is, is run by foreigners, which is related to technologies to turn waste into, um, into biodiesel, uh, as well as uh, into the raw materials to be reinserted into production, uh, to production lines. And what else? And, and Plastic Exchange, which is a community-led initiative that is, is trying to create the plastic, becoming plastic waste as, a, as a, almost like as a currency. Um, so these are the initial five, uh, initial four or five that we're working with, but we're adding more local initiatives. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna, uh, once the people is registered, we expect this to happen when the first deadline ends uh, for the early bird. We're gonna send uh, an email to the registered people to say, okay, thank you know you are registered to the fab uh, to the fab fest to the body fab fest. And uh, now you can pick to participate in some of these challenges. Uh, so you can choose three options. And then when we receive all the applications for people and the challenges that they want to work, uh, we're going to organize teams around the challenges. And then we're going to organize a series of activities before the challenge. So they're going to be around two calls with the groups, mixing the local, uh, local initiatives uh, with the participants and even there is room also to involve some global initiatives as well, no? like a more international knowledge. For instance, Manu Prakash from Stanford is saying that he wants to participate. So we maybe connect his lab with some people doing um, what he was wanted to, con 
to work on ocean conservation. So we maybe do this matchmaking between local and global organizations, and then the participants create like a, I don't want to confuse, but it's as a working group, but also or one of the task force, right? Because the working group has something else, and not is gonna kill me if I call this. Uh, working groups as well. Amazing, Tomás. Saludos from Mexico. ¿Qué pasa, Oscar? Hey. Hola. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a question. Um, sure. For collaborations, like, uh, like for instance, I was thinking of an art collaboration, like uh, maybe setting up an art installation um uh, there uh, to my team uh, we're producing actually a lot of art with tech in the fab lab uh, a lot of sculptures for museums and artists and uh i was thinking something like you know like kind of like a collaboration of like burning man like collaboration of sculpture uh representing something mm -hmm. so like well maybe you can connect me to somebody there and uh, we can get the sponsorship or something or is, is there a budget there or just like we will have to like support with the uh, sponsorship i mean we, we have sponsors well, so they can we're fundraising as i said like yeah. we have the, we have to cover the you know we have i think like to cover almost the, the bare minimum yeah. uh we need we need to complete some of the costs uh, of course with the tickets but mm -hmm. uh, we will need sponsors if we want to do crazy stuff, right? Uh, right. Um, we're getting a lot of things in kind as well, uh, but if we want to do put extra, that will need to come with its own sponsorship. We can okay. help to spawn to fundraise as well. Yeah. Uh, I'd send you in, inside the Fab Island challenge, there are, there are some, uh, some information about the sponsorship but I can mm -hmm. share with you another one, which is the sponsor package. Okay. And, and it's, you know, again, this, of course, this is not targeted to any of you. It's targeted to maybe someone that you know that would yeah. be interested in contributing this. And this will help, you know, to, where even the speakers that are coming, we're telling them that we don't have yet resources to pay their flights or to pay them fees. And so the people that you're going to see that are accepting to participate at, at covering most of their costs. Um, and that's, you know, that's basically what we managed to, to put together in such a short notice. But if you have ideas to fundraise, uh, we would love to, 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 to help. And, yes. uh, and definitely happy to, to find connections. Yeah, we'll be happy to support the sponsorship uh, initiative. So. You know, I, I I'm good at we're good here at sponsor sponsoring, so sure. Definitely, if I can do something and I can help, maybe we can sit and you know I can help out the team. Super, super, and uh, there is a a burner community here in Bali uh, ah, as well. So there are some people that have been involved in Burning Man and and they are close to that other type of community I was mentioning before. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Very fun. Thank you. Thanks. So yeah, um, yeah, Peter, um, Alex Shop was fundamental in the setup of the Fab Lab. I think the first Fab Lab in Indonesia, in uh, in Yogyakarta at the House of Natural Fiber, which is I think it's like a little bit in Idol, it's like a standby, a little bit. And so that lab is some we we have access to the people that used to run the lab, and and we are trying to involve them as well as. Uh, many other maker spaces, fab labs, as well as initiatives working with ethical blockchains, uh, new materials, uh, etc, etc. So we're going to organize like a couple of meetups with the Indonesian ecosystem uh, organized by CAST. And that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. And James, yeah, I remember when James came here, he, he stayed in my friend's place and uh, so we're well aware, and uh, I think James is going to be involved also in bringing uh, some of his machines here, hopefully, and making some of his machines here. Nice. Uh, and Hank, uh, about the accommodation, uh, ah, you already shared, uh, noted? No. In the, in the website, we're starting to, to put uh, in the travel, Recommendations, we start to put the list of hotels that we are starting to work. Indone in Bali, 
it's a place that you can find you can sleep like uh, literally next to rats and cockroaches and pay like at three dollars per night um, and still sleep you know like uh, yes we can do it um, you can sleep for at the same place in I don't know 25 30 dollars per night and uh, you can rent something by month that probably is going to make things a lot cheaper of course um, and you can stay in a place that it costs two thousand dollars per night it's like it's really that range it's insane so we're we we're putting some recommendations there are like a, you know the safe hotels for us are the ones close to jimbaran hub but of course you are free to look you know airbnb options or or other alternatives that you feel more comfortable with so take our recommendations there but of course it's up to you to to choose in which range you want to stay um if you're coming for for a couple of weeks another option and, and with you can also rent things with a bunch of people um Again, like you can say in a decent hotel and the overall cost for the two weeks, maybe it's not gonna be too much um, in, in reasonable prices. A lot, it will be cheaper than your rent in anywhere in Europe, I'm quite sure, for the ones that would pay rent. Um, if you're gonna stay for a month, definitely look for renting an entire house with more people. Uh, if you're gonna stay for two months, I recommend you staying for maybe a week somewhere else and then look for a place and go and see them and check them uh, before you engage into two months, uh, a rent for two months. Yeah, next week we will be placing up the, the link for accommodations in the website. So I'll be sending that on the Telegram group as well. Will there be a, a blended version, like virtual part of it? Because I, I won't be able to to come for two weeks and, and close the lab here. Uh, we are gonna do, uh, all of the efforts are gonna go to make a, a presential event. Uh, we want to bring people together and we're gonna document what is happening. Uh, so we're aiming to, to create content that kind of have, creates a, a kind of a, the a, or or records and documents what has been happening during the event we want to organize daily fab tv sessions but what we are not going to do is to every single thing try to make it double you know like I make it presential and digital so whatever is happening is happening here uh, they will be of course like a, a you know a, like a short, um, how do you call it, resume? Um, yeah, summaries of the day. Maybe summaries, of the day. summaries of the day. And then there will be sessions that will be Fab TV, which, um, you know, I think like a, I personally loved last year, Fab TV, which like a, maybe some of the speakers and some of the people that is there, you know, we, we we're setting up like a, a TV studio where people sit down, talk and, and, and discuss with the network what is happening in Bali and create a moment of interaction of one or two hours. Yeah, and we uh, and to add to that, basically, the we will record the panels and uh, also the symposium, but that will be like asynchronous, uh, meaning that we will upload that later, not as the conference takes place. So, uh, and maybe the only ones that will be like online, uh, will be what we have called for a couple of years, the working groups of like topics like Fab Academy, Fab Academy, things like that, uh, where we know that it's a, a really diverse group. Those will definitely be at least we will have a Zoom room available in the room where people are in person to uh, get them involved. But also because of time zoning, it's going to be really hard to sync in the three time zones in the morning of Indonesia and then in the af in the um, in a basically you will be sleeping. yeah you uh, Europe will be sleeping it's like 3 a.m or something like that so it will be really hard for people to connect if we definitely do them online so I think uh as an overall decision we decided that we are gonna like record at least the most important parts of the conference then place them asynchronously maybe more synchronously would be the summaries of the day 
for sure we have the fab tv versions uh and uh then like the big panels and things like that will be like a week after the event they will be placed online for everyone to watch so yeah we're trying our best in a blended situation but sometimes blended in time zones in different time zones doesn't even work <laughs> Um, it's something that you reminded me also, Nore, in terms of the, the, the accommodation, you say, because you mentioned homestays. So let me give you like a, the price range and what you can expect. If you find online that the name is COS, K-O-S, and you say, oh, this is so cheap, expect that you're going to be in a situation in which you maybe have someone else in the room or, or something else in the room uh, in, in the shape of any animal so the cost is the cheapest option uh, and not always the cleanest and um, the next one is the homestay which is more like a for backpackers kind of approach uh, but you can find like a some you know i mean uh, they're cleaner you can have individual rooms with your in some of the cases most of the cases with individual bathroom and a shared swimming pool and then uh, the other, then when it's called hotel, then the, it's like a, the price goes up. No? So cost maybe it's like a below $10. Then homestays is the range is between 15 and maybe $35. And then when it's hotel, it's a little bit more. No? So keep that in mind. Um, you pay for what you get in most of the cases. Um, and yeah, I think like a, there are, again, like a plenty, plenty of options. Um, and it's even nice if, I don't know if I would recommend to book all the days, if you're going to stay longer than the event, don't, of course, don't book all the time in the same place, because if you stay some days after, uh, it would be nice for you to travel around the island and stay in, in other places. There's a lot to see, a lot. Uh, just a question about the ticket price. So imagine that with the French Fab Lab Network, we plan to buy maybe one or two tickets. And a couple of weeks before the event, for some reason, with the outbreak, for instance, or whatever, the event can't happen. Um, is it possible for the French Fab Lab Network to get reimbursed of the ticket? How do you plan this, uh, this possibility? Yeah, no, as I said before, uh, not only for the French, but also, the non-French will course, get reimbursed. I mean, I represent the French Fab <laughs> Network here. I hope, I, hope, I hope that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> so I ask for my case, but I guess it's going to be the same for everybody. So in my There's case. No, no, no discrimination. Uh, but uh, in what do you, you think like only one or two people will come from the, fab, the French network? Or is just uh, an example? No, we are discussing about one, maybe two representative board members of the French Fab Lab Network. Uh, ah, you mean the, from the association itself, yeah, yeah. right? Like, uh, okay, okay. I don't know, the president or secretary or whatever. So okay. this is under discussions. But I mean, it's 500 euro, which is going to be probably 1,000 euro for the two of them, uh, which is okay. But then how can we make sure, you know, being ensured that we're going to get back the money if the event doesn't happen? Nore, do you have something to say about that? Yeah, I, I want to add to that that there are a couple of discounts available for uh, uh, members of the community, especially if you're part of the uh, regional network. Uh, there's more information on our frequently asked uh, question section in the website so that you can contact either me if it's uh, for the general network or uh, contact Luciana if it's for Fab Academy or Fabric Academy. So there's a couple of discounts there related to if they apply with or without a workshop. With workshop, we have more discounts or more incentives on discounts. So if they don't wanna do a workshop, it's fine. They still get like a 10% discount if they are part of uh, Fab Labs IO. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, just so you know, there's a, a couple of discounts available for them. But yeah, if in the case that there is an outbreak or that there is, I don't know, we go under lockdown. No, 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 I don't want that anymore. Uh, so <laughs> we will definitely do like the, um, give back the money to all the people that have purchased that. Yeah. What I mentioned is like, a, we, we, we maybe have to make, because it's the second time and maybe it's not so clear, Nore, we should add it into FAQ. Like the refund policy, I think like we need to be very clear that if there are transaction costs, we will have to, you know, but we cannot do is to lose also all the money that we put in the event, plus 
refund entirely to everyone. So maybe you know the transaction cost, and we will be as transparent as possible in relation to that. But yeah, we are not aiming to to keep uh, the ticket money if the event doesn't happen. No, no, but it can also be reused for uh, the year after. Uh, so I mean, one of the questions of the board was like, okay. Are, okay, like to keep the money, but we can come for I don't know, it's Mexico next year or something like this. So. I, it will work, you know what I mean? So no, for sure it will. No, for sure it will not pass from one event to another. That's super hard to do, uh, especially when it's like different locations, different partners. Uh, so I think in the case that uh, the event does uh, doesn't happen, it will happen. Uh, uh, yeah. Touch uh, <laughs> uh, wood. Touch wood. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, in case it doesn't happen, we will like. Give back the money, and we will we will definitely the fees that the uh, the platforms take those we cannot get get back, but at least the the overall price we will. So, so yeah. Um, more questions. The transport mostly uh, the most convenient, fast, and of course, and it's extreme sport at the same time is is the motorbike. It's using the motorbike. Um, the um, you are required to have an international license. That's the best that you can avoid to be blackmailed by anyone. Um, but there are always ways to work around it. I'm, I'm not supposed to say this in a recorded thing, but yes, it's not the end of the world if you don't have your international uh, driver's license, uh, but it's recommended. Um, there is uh, two services which are Gojek and Grab. Gojek and Grab which are like uh, two of the most interesting apps uh, that you know they beat Uber and, 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 and a lot of other apps in terms of mobility, convenience, etc. So they basically, when you arrive, and I think we put that somewhere in the, also in the recommendation, the best is for you to get a local SIM card, which is quite cheap. You get a few gigabytes of data, which is very fast and very good. And uh, the internet is super reliable uh, uh, at all levels. Um, and with a local number, you can create your, your Gojek account. And with your Gojek account, basically it's like an Uber. So you can move, you know, you can have a Gojek driver by car and by, and by some of you get a Gojek car, uh, or you can get a Gojek motorbike and get in the back of a motorcycle driver and, and experience the madness of the Indonesian traffic. Um, we will be organizing transport uh, for some of the special events as well for the visits to the to the places where the Fab Island Challenge is happening. So we're gonna get buses. And, and yeah, I think I, got, I hope that that covers. Uh, I am just one thing, this is not a great place to learn how to drive a motorbike. So you either drive a motorbike or you don't drive a motorbike. Hope that that is clear. Any other questions? Because we are basically just over the hour. Well, we are open to any questions that come up as you start figuring out. Uh... Yeah, yeah. No, no. Just, just to make to make a comment on that. Like, I wanted. I think like there was like a. It was sensitive to respond by text. Why we organizing the event in Bali if there is no fab labs? Who is these people, right? Like I didn't want to respond just by text, and you know, many people are open to interpret. You know, can make a lot of interpretations, especially because we have some trolls in the group as well. So I wanted to make very clear that uh, how we are operating and and where these things coming from. Uh, also, sure that we have accountability. So every any any doubt, any question you wanna have responded. You can always come to us either in the group or personally. You know, some most of you have our emails, both Norella and I. And, and, and when we don't have the clear answer, we will tell you that we are figuring it out. And, and just want you to make sure that again, like uh, we are doing this because we wanted to make it happen. And we might take good, bad decisions, but we are always gonna be able to be accountable for those and 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 explain to the network why we did the things that we are doing. Yeah, so and, 
free to ask us any questions on chat or write us emails, preferably write us to the email of the event so that it doesn't get collapsed with other uh, emails in our inbox. Uh, the email that we're currently using is fab17 at uh, fabfoundation.org. That's where yeah. I can keep track of all the things related to the event. Uh, and yeah, welcome to Bali Fab Fest. Hope you will oh. join us uh, this fall in uh, in Indonesia. Uh, and yeah, I think we have been a couple of years apart, and it's uh, the the <laughs> it's the chance that we have to get together for a couple of days. So uh, we would love to have you all there, all of you there. We know that something sometimes is not possible, at least most of you. Uh, so I would recommend you maybe to gather with your regional networks if you are uh, part of any, try to figure out ways to participate. Also, just remember, I know Tomas did not mention this, but most of the program is going to be based around or just to, for you to learn a little bit more about what the full stack is about. Uh, this is mostly related to Fab City, but I think we're trying to uh, get it into a broader uh, approach throughout the network. So uh, just look that up as you go into the participation section, or if you have any questions, just text us or send us an email. Um, and I think that's all for today. So thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining uh, today. So wonderful to see this many familiar faces wanting to know more about uh, the event and hope to see you soon in Bali. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Cheers. Bye bye. See you. Bye. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.